Well, hello and welcome to the Ramon Foster Show, brought to you by the Get Go Cafe and Market, where they're open twenty four seven, serving hot, fresh food. Moan, what's going on after the Steelers' 19-9 preseason finale <laughs> victory over the Lions? First and foremost, shout out to Chris Boswell. Just got to throw that out there, okay? Um, other than that, man, it's the end. End of preseason as we know it, man, with this gap week. And now things get very, very real, real fast, DK. So I'm still piped up from the game, of course. Uh, post-game reaction. Here we go, dog. Yeah, post game reaction. We could talk about any number of a million things. Yeah. But, but I'm sorry. When it's the Ramon Foster show and the yeah. issue number one is sitting there in your lap. Uh huh. What are we doing with here? Oh, well, man. Still got yeah. some stuff we got to clean up. Uh, the quicker we get together as far as finding this five, and it seems to be that uh, Kevin Dotson is going to be that left guard, man, uh, which uh, again, Giving up stuff way too soon, man. Got to get a little bit more stronger in the stance. And I say this to uh, my tackles. You know I love Chooks. You you know I'm a huge fan of Dan Moore, too. Uh, just just getting more stout at that edge so those quarterbacks can step up in the pocket it has to be something that's got to be addressed soon, man. Uh, I, I, that's, that's one of the things that we stress our tackles on is getting to that point and creating space, creating a, a place in which the quarterback didn't feel pressure. Look, it's one thing to set back, but you can't continue to set back after you've already got off the line of scrimmage five yards. That clock goes off. One of those things that, that DNs focus on is, look, if I'm even, I'm going to the quarterback. If it's even, it's already too late. If I'm even with the quarterback in my rush, those guys got to step up, man. Dan Moore with the penalties, man, is something that can't be accepted. Again, I'm high on this kid, and I don't know what's changed a little bit from last year to this year in camp, but the edge, and I spoke about this last week. Remember, DK, you were asking me to explain to you. He was a, He's a guy, man, that as of late, and this is so weird to me, he is over athletic. He played a lot as a rookie, and for yeah. some reason, guys are attacking him on his left side to get to the quarterback, and he had that holding call during the game, and it, it, it's it's becoming an issue, and it has to leave ASAP. It's a must that it has to leave. You're starting off this season hot, Okay. Let's let's not they have let's not forget Cincinnati has Davenport and not just that the guys that are getting him aren't like heavy big dudes they're smaller guys off the edge and Davenport is one of those dudes the uh, former uh, New Orleans Saints rusher that leans heavy on guys that knows how to work the edge a little bit and that's just week one. This has to be fixed, man, and I, I, I say has to be because there's a sense of urgency. I know there's a process as far as working through it, but both tackles ended up having holding calls today. Uh, the, the guards in general, again, the stoutness of what they're doing and performing. I thought James Daniel had a little bit better, uh, a better day during the game. He took that initiative, and that's what you expect from a veteran like that too, DK, and, and, and not just that. Again, we're still looking for that guy to step up and take that leadership role. Not not that look, I'm the alpha in the room, but it's look, I'm tired of this. We are the biggest group on the field. We are the biggest group on the team. It's on us to not hold this offense back because we talked just a smidge before we hit record. And I said, this offense, I feel, can be special even without Ben because of the weapons you have. But it can't be that way, DK, if we can't protect the quarterbacks, dog. And you saw like I saw. It just, it, it, it's, it's so <laughs> deflating. It's like it, anybody who does take an offensive line for granted needs <laughs> to feel this feeling yeah, man. Yeah. because there's nothing. You can get all the shiny toys uh, that you want. Yeah. You get your Najee Harris and your mm -hmm. Deontay Johnson and your mm -hmm. George Pickens and your Pat Fryermuths, and it just doesn't matter. You it can doesn't. chant Kenny's name, yeah. and it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm happy to – tell you that I, I I spent some time with these guys after the game uh James Daniels in particular yeah who I hadn't been able to catch up to uh, catch up with after uh, since since Jacksonville yeah finally spent some good time with him and his stance was very similar to yours moan he said there were some good things and some bad and I said mm -hmm. and he said and he gave the obligatory we got to watch the film on Tuesday and everything else and I said well come on it just Give me the good then. Tell me what yeah. you know was good. <laughs> and he said, honestly, and you're going to like this, Moan. He said, honestly, we felt like we we had pushed back. 
Yeah. He said, and this is his exact words, he said there were times out there last week where it felt like we were getting beaten with a baseball bat and we never had a chance to just recover and bounce back and find our best aggressive selves. You follow me? Yep, I agree. I, I, I really liked his candor there. I'll tell you what I liked even more. As I'm talking to him, Mason Cole is two stalls down, okay? And Mason Cole jumps in and he says, I echo everything James has to say here, ex- except that we also need to get rid of our penalties. Yeah. So, look, was it perfect? No. Mike no. Tomlin acknowledged himself that it was better than last week. Now, that's like asking Mrs. Lincoln what she thought of the rest of the play. <laughs> but at the same time, it's it's something. It's It was everyone wanted a step forward, Bone. They got a step forward, even if it wasn't an attractive one. We did. And there's two things in, that, in those comments you had right there, DK. One is we got our guy. It's James Daniels. Okay? It's him. He's the guy that they need to follow, okay? Because that was as real as it can get. And two, <laughs> it really you, was. You yeah. got another guy that realizes that, and that's Mason Cole. Two veteran out of the locker room guys, meaning those are two free agents. Now, it's upon those guys that's been there. Dan Moore, drafted by the Steelers. Kevin Dawson, drafted by the Steelers. Chook's been there through two eras. Drafted by the Steelers, too, man. So let, let's let's say this, too, DK. This, this group, man, that has to come together uh, is... It's, it's going to take a, a, a couple things out of this, too. And I, I, I want to know where you stand real quick. They got to play together game after game after game. And they got to have a war of attrition just week after week after week, too. Those two things have to happen. Me, they are, are we willing to allow them to have bad moments, too? You see what I'm saying? Because those five got to stick. Because that was the luxury that we had, which is why we were allowed to stay around a good bit, too, was nobody really had any major injuries. And if there was one, the ship kept moving. And then we also, and I said this time and time again, too, we had to grow up fast. And we got beat down and still gave up sacks and stuff, too. With this group with as good as skilled players that they have, are you, people in Pittsburgh, willing to allow them to grow, too? Or is it too fragile of a time? Not at left tackle, Mo. Okay. I'm, I'm with you. sorry. I just needed to know the answer. Okay. Yeah. I, I can't. I don't care how many quarterbacks you've got sitting around in storage. Yeah. You you can't do that. I, yeah. I, I just I don't know what the answer is for Dan Moore because it's 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 not internal. Joe Hayes no. got a concussion. Uh didn't didn't play again in this one. I don't know. I don't know. When we come back, we'll talk about the quarterbacks while they're still standing. (laughs) Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. Boy, is there no longer any suspense as to who the quarterback is, huh? My goodness. (laughs) Yes, man. I'm I'm guessing you're guessing Mitchell Trubisky? Oh, my goodness. I mean, he, he plays the whole half. Yeah. Um, you know, Mike Tomlin said, you know, that he I might have an idea, but I'm not giving you that today. <laughs> of course. Here, look at it this way. Don't look at what he's done yeah. with Trubisky. Look at what he'd have to justify to put Kenny Pickett in as the starter yeah. in Cincinnati against the defending Super Bowl champs when he barely gave him any snaps in the last two preseason. This games. week. Yeah. And, and this week, week. Or last the- week. This upcoming week, man, um, as they go through cuts, I think on Tuesday, um, this will be game prep. And the fact that that Mitchell Trubisky made it out healthy, oh, yeah. played as much as he did, and did uh, good. he's good. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and he, he played he good. He had an air of confidence that I don't know if he ever had in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? The way I've watched his career there, he's talking to the sideline and talking to the guys, like directing, like, all right, I got this. But what else I was about to say was this is a week for him to fully prep, to get the game plan, to be the guy. He's going to get all 12 plays, okay? If they're still doing 12 plays at practice during the team periods, he's going to get those 12. He's going to get those 12, and he's going to get those 12. Plus, he's going to do uh, seven on seven, and he'll do red zone separately. Like, that's what's going to happen this week. Now it comes down to prep. And what happens behind Kenny Pitt, if, if, with Kenny Pickett behind him, is simply this, man. He has to be in a position 
situation to where he's actively learning every single rep. No matter what's going on, Kenny Pickett must be behind because I know this to be a fact for the most part, DK. Everybody who's mostly a Steeler fan wants to kind of see Kenny Pickett in there. OK, oh, and yeah. now it's on Kenny Pickett to be a pro and learn and not sit back and say, oh, it's regular season now It's Mitch's show. No, that's not the case. It don't work like that. OK, when it comes down to scout team for a guy like Kenny Pickett, you better dice them apart as if it's game day for you, because every day is a game day for you. If you want to be the guy that takes over that job midway through the season. So, yeah, DK, I ride with you on that. And we hadn't even actually said because I asked you, I said, OK, I hope you're Mitch. I hope you mean uh, Mr. Well, Mitch, I think, is more prepared to be the opening day starter on the road in Cincinnati. And I say this, too. No matter what you thought of him, you got to look at him and say, this kid held his own this this preseason, man. Yeah, that, that's the probably the most encouraging aspect uh, of anything related to this offense, I believe through this training camp, even though Kenny Pickett won't be the starter, mm-hmm. the fact that he didn't take a back seat in any way, shape, or form yeah. uh, was a big plus for this franchise, not just in the short term, but also in the long term. A commenter uh, on our website, DK Pittsburgh hmm. Sports, I thought put it really well where they said, if this was a year-long battle between Trubisky and Pickett, Pickett's going to win it. But mm-hmm. this battle, when and where it is on the calendar, yeah. you, you just it's can't do it. it. No, You just it's- can't do it. It's not afforded, man, but you got to feel confident in it, too. And again, DK, as you ended the last here, last, last section, you said, you know, if they stand straight up, um, that 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 is a point to be made. Uh, what I did see was those guys show some type of escapability when they had pressure on them, too. They were smart with the ball also when they had that pressure on them. Also, they weren't trying to be heroes. They operated in a fashion I thought was very pro to actually being starters in this league. One again for Mitchell Trubisky and a young Kenny Pickett that understand, look. I don't have to be Superman. They dropped balls in where you needed them to be. They handed the ball up the way they could. They operated the offense. I feel confident. Again, I know it's not Ben. I know it's not Patrick Mahomes. I know it's not Aaron Rodgers. Okay, I'm with you there. But the proper growth, DK, as you said, and the proper understanding of getting protection and being able to say, look, if y'all give me time, I'm going to do work. And also being able to create with your legs, I think, is one of the biggest advantages that we have with these two quarterbacks. And, yeah, we're not really mentioning Mason much at all right now. But I think we all kind of understand what this situation could be with the uh, rumors that were circulating around camp this weekend. I'll tell you what, the team the Steelers faced in this game could use Mason Rudolph. (laughs) Sure they could. The Seattle Seahawks could use Mason Rudolph. I know the list isn't real long here. Well, I I got Carolina, too. Carolina Panthers are another team that's looking for a quarterback. Which he's from South Carolina. So I, I just, you know, I, I don't, you know, I've been saying for a while I expect him to be traded. Uh, I expect that now more than ever with Mason only having been out there for like three oh, minutes no. and change. I mean, it was the lowest form of mop-up duty. Oh, uh, for three at that. Well, yeah, but again, I mean, he's throwing t- – to uh, yeah it is what it is um, <laughs> i know man so a lot of people get their wish this weekend me personally it sucks because i have a relationship with mason but the business is what the business is and if they can get some type of capital or backup project tackle position of need somewhere dk or draft pick you can't be too mad about it man business is what business says it's supposed to be in this next move i assume for mason rudolph will be business when we come back, we'll mean business. The only segment that matters. Hey, on. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show and the only segment that matters, the Hey Moan segment. And today's entry comes from George Rice, who says, not surprisingly, Hey Moan, how can a guy play offensive line in high school? And he was good enough to play in college. And then he's good enough to get drafted. And then they forget how to play the position in the NFL. That doesn't make any sense. Wow. Uh, man, there's a <laughs> lot that goes into that. Like, a lot that goes into that. And I'll say I can break it down to you real quick. Environment matters a little bit. Um, some guys go to colleges regionally. I'll just talk from college to the NFL. 
Um, some guys go to schools regionally close to home. So they feel a sense of comfort. Like I was terrified to go play in New York, New Jersey area. OK, I, I really was not going to the West Coast. I don't know how I would have reacted to it. I don't know how I would have lived there. It was just a different lifestyle. At least I thought in my mind, even though I knew I had to do the job. Me personally, it might have been better that I, I went undrafted so that I could pick where I was going to go. Lo and behold, Pittsburgh was a very blue collar city. Worked out into my favor, man. Uh, so I, I think environment can have something due to it. I think with some guys, they dominate so well all the way up through from high school to college. And then when they get to the NFL and they have this one guy that really they can't they can't unlock. They can't beat. Um, you get humbled more than you ever thought you possibly would. Uh, some guys can't bounce back from that. The challenge of actually pushing yourself sometimes, I think, plays a huge role in that. Uh, I've seen guys just, you know, uh, were, were college good as far as strength, but not strong enough for the field. They couldn't make it last long. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's that component of it, too. And the other side of it is sometimes I think the money settles guys. I think some guys get to that point to where, man, if I just, you know, can start in high school, bam, I did that. Maybe if I can just start in college, bam, I did that. Man, if I could just get drafted and then you do that. And some guys mentally check out when they either get the money or they hit that next goal. So you ask yourself, well, what's next? Some guys, you got to think come from a situation where it's the most money they ever made in their entire lives. And then their position in the sense that, they don't know how to react to it. Like, this is it. I can go back to, you know, Western PA, middle of the six and live like a king. I can go to West Tennessee, Ripley, Tennessee, and live like a king here. Like, I'm good. I don't have a whole lot else going on that's going to pique my interest. Like, some of it becomes self-drive. It really does, man. And I've seen all three of those things happen to where um, you get overexposed to the life. You get overexposed to a lot of things. Like there's a lot that goes into it. I, I want to pick. I, I want to. I Yo, wanna let, pick let's on hear. Dan Moore. Okay, Dan Moore is very visibly struggling, and we really couldn't say that about the entire line in this game. Okay. Yeah. And it may be not to put words in in George's mouth, but maybe just to graft onto his question here a little bit. It's the things you're talking about, Moan, that Dan mm-hmm. isn't doing well. These aren't these aren't those things. You're right. <laughs> these aren't yeah, big I, NFL yeah. concepts. These aren't money things. This is this, this is somebody getting beaten yeah. repeated repeatedly, like you said, to the left shoulder. Yeah. Uh, somebody has found something in his game, and they're exploiting it. And I, what is a solution for that? Can that be worked out in practice? Can that be yeah. something that the offensive line coach says, okay. "Hey, I need." And Alex Highsmith or somebody to do this one thing to him yeah. every freaking snap until you know he what? figures out a way to, to to stop it. He may have to just start at base one. Like if it was time I was struggling, DK, I would stop. I would start with step over the line, step over the line, kick out, kick What's out. That mean? Base What's that like mean? My, I will get in my stance and I will move forward one two step over like the the line of scrimmage line just to make sure that my feet were right. Then I will kick step. And I would go very slow and methodical with it. I think that's where Dan may have to go. I like I'm not in practice to see him do work as far as that goes. You know, as far as him going back to the bases, one two, one two in his stance as far as kick slide. Or does he understand how to watch film as a pro to understand what he needs to do to take that away? Like getting out of your comfort zone a little bit more to where he may have to. What I've seen Dan Moore do, and I, I'm, I'm I'm shocked to actually figure out why nobody's actually gotten him to the point to where they corrected is like he's not taking the fight to them. He's absorbing the fight. If you watch him take on the ends outside linebackers, they hit him and then he rolls back. Like there's a and again, this is what I'm saying like uh, with the second one like there's a level of strain that has to happen. Like you're you're not a rookie anymore. You got 17 games on you last year. They're going to break you down. And it seems like to me, he hasn't made that adjustment to be self-aware about his weaknesses. You see what I'm saying? He, so Yeah, he's not he's he's not punching. He's waiting to counter punch. Yes. And I, he's way too athletic for something like that. And I, I say that very respectfully. Like how how come there's nobody in the room seeing that or making him switch up? You know, 
I so can't to, answer to the, that. To that, to that point, I can't answer that. with him, it's got to go back to the basics. Where are my feet at? Where are my hands? Why do they continue to tack this outside left side of mine? If it's strength, work on it. If you got an issue with your hips, work on it. And that that's honestly player to player. Everybody has their deficiencies. You do, DK. And you know what you do? You work to minimize those and highlight your highs. And for a guy that I know worked his butt off this offseason, it's simply not translating. So whatever he did, scrap that and go look at old film. See what the difference was there. That's yeah. the thing about it. You get they they record every practice rep. Go even back to the rookie NFL. year. Even pre-NFL. Even figure yeah. it out because mm-hmm. he's in a prime position. Starting and just at that left tackle spot in general. And that could end very quickly, DK. You know that. He he could ruin everything. I mean, he can make his quarterback gun shy. He he can make his quarterback horizontal. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> and there's and I mean bad horizontal. Uh, and and that, that's I, I don't know. I don't have an go, answer. He got to go back to the drawing board. Just simply put, yeah, it's working with the bags. It's checking your feet, making sure your base is good, having somebody run into you, and feeling that. And pushing and straining against that, too. When I knew I was facing faster DNs, I would get a DB Cam Sutton. Shout out to him. Go Vols. Okay, great pick tonight. I would have him. He's one of the guys. Hey, Cam, I need you rushing off the edge for me. Get a running start because I'm going to see a faster dude. And I wouldn't punch him hard, but I needed to feel what that was. Mm-hmm. You know, like those were the things that I did. If I was mm-hmm. seeing Gino and he was fast as ever at the time, I mean, it was another DB. Mike Hilton was another one. You know, like, hey, I need you to go right here. I'm not going to punch you, but I need I need to feel the speed. Like, that's what happens with true pros in this league. You do those things. Did you just put Geno Atkins' speed in the same category as Mike Hilton's? Fast. That's unbelievable okay. that Within you just three did yards, that. One, I want to make three, sure four. I call attention to that. Hey. These were not players at similar positions. Fast. You just did that so casually. No, I, I don't think you understand that three yard box right there gets get cut in in, oh. in half really fast. Yeah, that's that was that's one uh, particularly special player on that side of the football <laughs> yeah. for sure. Uh, for I, I'm going to let everybody know here that I'm flying up to uh, Milwaukee to cover baseball yeah. for the next three days. That means Eddie Providence is going to be infilling in as ably as he always does, <laughs> and. Mom will enjoy that. Hey, again, somebody might lose a job here. Oh, here we go again with this. <laughs> see how this happens? Yeah. <laughs> You're right. I'll see you later in the week. The remote see, Foster be safe, Show will be baby. back tomorrow. <laughs>